Hi, I'm Matt Needham, and this is my HVACR flashcard video. Let's dive right in. This is a solenoid coil. This is a light. This is a capacitor. This is a fuse. This is a single pole, single throw contact. This is a triple pole single throw contact. This is a transformer. This is a 90 down. This is a T down. This is a check valve. This is a ball valve. This is a T up. This is a P-trap. This is a drain valve. This is a thermocouple. This is a limit switch. This is a unit heater. This is a boiler. This is a heater. This is a gas valve. This is a hot water heating coil. This is an air filter. This is a centrifugal fan. This is opposed blade dampers. This is parallel blade dampers. This is um, a ventilator exhaust. This is ventilator intake. This is a propeller fan. This is a condenser fan motor. This is an evaporator fan motor. This is a chiller. This is a high pressure cutout. This is a compressor. This is a cooling thermostat or makes on rise thermostat. This is a crankcase heater. This is R422B, also known as New 22, refrigerant. This is R410A. This green color is R22. Light blue is R134A. R402A, R404A, and R123. Now that we've gone through the flashcards, and I kind of did that so you can just go to the beginning and watch the first uh, few minutes to learn them, I'm going to go back over them in more detail and tell you a little bit about it so um, that you can maybe the idea is that this video you watch the whole thing five times. Uh, and maybe you watch that first couple of minutes, that one lap through, maybe 10 or 15 times to learn all the symbols, okay? And also, I created, a, I invented a card game that goes along with these, and you'll see different things like the black suit are general electrical symbols that aren't exclusively heating and aren't exclusively cooling, okay? And they're black, and that's why we have a solenoid coil that might be like a liquid line solenoid valve or a hot water valve or chilled water valve. Even this symbol sometimes appears for like a contactor coil or a relay coil and that it uses magnetism. And this is kind of universally accepted symbol for magnetism solenoid coil. Okay. And then this is a symbol for a light. And if you had like an R in here, it would be like a red light. Uh, yellow would be like a yellow light, uh, a Y would be like a yellow light, G would be like a green light. Okay, that's the schematic electrical symbol for a light. This is a symbol for a capacitor. Capacitors help single phase motors to run. We have run capacitors and start capacitors, but the electrical symbol looks like this for a capacitor. And then this is a fuse, and we tend to use slow um, a time delay or dual element fuses in the air conditioning refrigeration industry, a fuse, okay? This is single pole, single throw contact. 
one pole in and it only having one place to go on the out, single throw, single pole, single throw. This is triple pole, three poles in, each only having one output per pole. So it's triple pole, single throw set of contacts. This is a transformer. Transformers convert one voltage into another, and the air conditioning and refrigeration industry were always using step-down transformers or lowering the voltage. So that's why the primary has more turns and more resistance than the secondary. A ballast, step-up transformer. All right, um, so those are the general electrical symbols. I'm using kind of this brownish-orange for piping symbols, and we share these symbols with plumbers that you might find on a blueprint for plumbing, this orange or brownish type of symbol. And again, I invented these colors for my card game. The, co the actual symbols are official ASHRAE symbols, but the way I've colorized them um, kind of lets you know how they go together with other ones, okay? So this is a 90 degree down, like an elbow down. And this is like a T down, like looking from above, and then you would have a T going down. And then this is a check valve. And the check valve, you can see the arrow only allowing uh, fluid to flow in one direction. And sometimes we use check valves, particularly in the refrigeration system on um, heat pumps, but we also use it on hot and chilled water systems also, okay? Here is a ball valve to uh, manually be able to close off flow of something. And then this is a T up, like you're looking up at an open pipe at you and the it's coming in from the sides and then the pipe is going up, a T up. This is a P trap. A P trap you find under almost any sink. It's that trap you see in your drain, but also sometimes when we have compressors way above evaporators coming out of the evaporator, we'll use a P trap, which aids in oil return. This is a drain valve, okay? Um, again, you might see these on a blueprint and probably the biggest one that I can think of would be like a drain valve for a cooling tower that you're going to, when you take it out of service and drain it down to clean it, there's a giant valve at the bottom of these cooling towers, a drain valve, and then you see the pipe going down indicating uh, flow down, okay? And then this is a thermal couple, two dissimilar metals, iron and constantin, that create a millivolt signal to prove a standing pilot for like a hot water heater or a wall furnace or something like that, a thermal couple. And then this is a limit switch. It breaks on a temperature rise. So if it gets too hot, it opens up the contact and kills the heating on a furnace. And the LS stands for limit switch by the code. You can't have a limit switch over 250 degrees. Most manufacturers though nowadays put their limit switches for furnaces more like 160 degrees, it's gonna open up and kill power to your furnace if it gets too hot above your heat exchanger. This is a unit heater. Unit heaters um, are commonly found like in garages and shops. You don't find them in residential buildings because they literally hang right from the ceiling in the occupied space. People don't like that cosmetically in particular, um, but they're a pretty efficient way of heating in the sense that you get no ductwork lost because the actual heater is hanging from the ceiling, okay? A unit heater. This is your, um, and by the way, the red, I guess I went on, the red are all these things that I've been going over that are the red suit are exclusively to heating. Everything that you've seen, which is red, like the boiler. This is uh, what you might find on a blueprint uh, for a boiler, okay? And then this is a schematic symbol, electrical symbol, just for an electric strip heater. And then this is a schematic symbol for a gas valve, okay, that's going to generally let natural gas flow through it when it's energized. This is a hot water heating coil, where if you had a boiler or something like that, and you're producing hot water, and you're having it go through a coil, something like a radiator, you could think, to heat a space, and you see the plus sign in the middle, so think plus or adding heat when you see this, okay? Now we come to blue, and blue I'm using for 
air symbols, things dealing exclusively with air like this air filter. And this kind of looks like a pleated air filter. And this is the actual symbol you'll find on a blueprint where the air filter should go or air filters. Okay, this is a centrifugal fan. Okay, just a note on centrifugal fans. If you have a change of direction of air or ductwork attached, we designed a centrifugal or squirrel cage fan to deal with that. Okay. This is a pose blade dampers. A pose blade dampers open and close like this. Okay. And then this is parallel blade dampers and parallel blade dampers open and close like this. And then this is a ventilator um, exhaust, or if you're getting rid of air from a building and there's a vent that's allowing that air to go outside, this is the symbol for um, that vent, okay? And then if you're bringing air in from the outside through some louvers, this is an exhaust vent, okay? And then this is a propeller fan. I showed you the centrifugal fan. Wherever you don't have a change in direction and, and or don't have duct work, we tend to use propeller fans, like little evaporator fans, condenser fans, things like that, just straight through a coil, little exhaust fans, and you don't have all this duct work attached to the output of it, um, we'll, we'll tend to use propeller fans. Now, these purple cards are things that deal exclusively with cooling in the tray. And this is a schematic symbol for a refrigeration or air conditioning compressor. And I'm sorry, this is the condenser fan motor, CFM. And then this is EFM, evaporator fan motor. Okay. Um, this is chiller. This is what you'd find on a blueprint to represent where your big chiller is going to be. Okay. And then this is a high pressure cutout. And it is on the high side of the system coming off the discharge. And if the pressure gets too high on the high side, this opens up and protects the compressor from harm. It's a safety device, high pressure cutout. The most common causes of that would be a dirty condenser or like a bad condenser fan motor or the capacitor that serves it. Okay, then we have the compressor here, which is air conditioning refrigeration compressor. Okay. And we have a cooling thermostat, makes on a temperature rise. Something gets too hot, a room gets too hot, a walk-in cooler gets too hot. This rises up and makes a contact, which then would bring on like the um, compressor, okay? It would be wired up um, and bring on the compressor either directly or indirectly, a cooling thermostat or makes on rise, okay? And then this is a crankcase heater. Crankcase heater, you're like, well, I thought the purple was exclusively cooling. Well, it's true, but this heater is only used for cooling when the cooling is off for air conditioning. Sometimes we put a heater on the bottom of the compressor so that that compressor gets heat in the crankcase when the system's off. That prevents refrigerant from migrating to our compressor when the system's off. This is really just used in air conditioning, not refrigeration, because in air conditioning, your system's off for many months sometimes in the winter when it's cold, your compressor's sitting outside in the cold, and you don't want refrigerant to migrate from the warmer evaporator, because you're not cooling it, to the colder compressor and deposit liquid refrigerant in your crankcase so you keep that oil warm to help keep liquid refrigerant out of your compressor crankcase heater. Now we come to a bunch of different colors, which are just common refrigerants that you can buy jugs of, uh, cylinders of, um, and they're color-coded. And dark blue or new 22, which is uh, R422B, is a replacement for um, R22, which is a super popular refrigerant for the last 60 years, but it's being phased out now. So we're, we have some replacement refrigerants for that, like new 22. R410A is pink or rose in color, and it's used... Um, for air conditioning, uh, particularly package units and split systems, uh, uh, window units, ductless mini splits, um, things of this nature in air conditioning, it's by far the most popular air conditioning refrigerant 
R410A. And then of course, my all-time favorite refrigerant, which is now being phased out, is R22, and it's a green cylinder. And um, I love it because it could do everything. You could do air conditioning with it, even sometimes high temperature refrigeration, uh, medium temperature refrigeration, or freezers. So R22, green in color. And then light blue is R134A. R134A is the main one used in medium temperature refrigeration. Sometimes it's used for a little bit of low temperature refrigeration, like a little ice cream freezer or something like that. Um, it's also used in your car air conditioner because, and we don't use 410A in your car because it's a very high pressure refrigerant. And if your car overheated or whatever, that pressure can easily get to 500 PSI and somebody pops the hood, dangerous. So we use 134A, it's a much lower pressure refrigerant. And we also sometimes use it for centrifugal chillers. So very popular refrigerant. 402A, not so much. It's just a replacement refrigerant um, and it's yellow in color. And then 404A is a refrigerant we use for low temperature like freezers. Um, this has a very high global warming potential and I can see us getting rid of it quite soon. This is R123, which is used in chillers. Okay, and then we come back around to um, the beginning again. That ends my lecture on my flashcards.